Right now at 6, make sure your vote counts. What to do if your ballot has been rejected. Plus, another stop in the Northland, where Vice President Mike Pence will be rallying next week. And letting them play, the decision to let Duluth after-school activities continue despite COVID-19 numbers. From CBS3 Duluth, this is the CBS3 News at 6. Good evening, I'm Natalie Grant. Tony and Kristen are off tonight. Thanks for joining us. Now, there is only 10 more days until the 2020 presidential election. If you voted absentee, you could have to re-vote if your ballot was rejected. City officials say that they've seen ballots rejected because people forgot to include their signature and identifying number on the signature envelope. Now, these are two very important factors you need in order for your vote to count in this election. If rejected, county workers will mail you a new absentee ballot and an explanation as to why yours was rejected in the first place. County officials say that if it, as it gets closer to election, the county may contact you by phone instead. Like if you put a phone number and email, we try to contact you that way as we get closer and say, okay, if, you know, we're getting close to the election, just to make you aware we can send this out or if you prefer, you can come in and vote. You can also track your ballot by logging on to mnvotes.org. The Northland will host another high-profile candidate visit just one week from Election Day. Vice President Mike Pence will make a campaign stop in Hibbing on Monday. Pence will hope, host a Make America Great Again rally at 1 o'clock on Monday afternoon. The event is happening at the Range Regional Airport. Doors are expected to open at 11 a.m. Now, according to the campaign, everyone will have their temperature taken, be given a mask, and will have access to hand sanitizer. You'll remember that this is Pence's second visit to the Northland this election cycle. He stopped in Duluth late, late August. President Trump has also held campaign rallies in Duluth and Bemidji. Democratic presidential candidate Joe Biden visited Duluth in September. Following last night's final presidential debate, President Trump will hold another rally in Wisconsin this weekend. The Trump team has scheduled Saturday's event in the conservative stronghold of Waukesha. This will be the president's fifth visit to Wisconsin since August. Recent polls have shown that Democratic challenger Joe Biden does have a slight lead in the battleground state. Trump carried Wisconsin by fewer than 23,000 votes in the 2016 election. The coronavirus will not put much of a damper on the annual White House Halloween festivities. The president and the first lady will welcome ghosts, superheroes, and goblins to the South Lawn on Sunday. All guests two years old and up will be required to wear masks and practice social distancing. Those handing out candy will be wearing gloves. Frontline workers, military families, and school children are amongst those expected to attend. We're going to turn things over to for a first look at the weather. Caitlin is in for Dave tonight. You know, just a, a calmer day today than yesterday weather-wise. <laughs> yes, much calmer, but still cold. Mm -hmm. Definitely below average. Uh, I have those high temperatures up behind me. And it, uh, as we look at those high temps across the region, we sat... Uh, well below average. The average high for Duluth is about 49 degrees. We came out at 34 degrees. But off to our west, those folks didn't get out of the 20s for high temperatures, sitting around 29 degrees, 32 degrees for Mercer. Now, if we take a look at the Doppler and satellite currently, we've got a few flurries out there that we've kind of seen all morning and afternoon as those lake effect ended in Ironwood. We've got another round of just light flurries and light snow just because of the colder temperatures aloft. We're going to be seeing that this evening, but little to no accumulation. Currently, we sit at 31 degrees in the Twin Ports, 29 up in International Falls with some light snow up there, 20, uh, 34 down in the Twin Cities, and 36 over in Eau Claire. Pretty quiet evening tonight, much, much calmer than last night uh, in terms of condition-wise, and we're going to continue that trend into the weekend. But overnight lows, 20 degrees up on the hill, a few teens to our north waking up Saturday morning with a very cold start. We'll see some sunshine come Saturday morning, and then we do have another round of snow likely for the Twin Cities on Sunday morning, but otherwise a pretty nice weekend on tap. I'll have those further details on the extended forecast coming up next. All right, thanks, Kaylin. Here is a live look at Spirit Mountain, where the annual ski swap is happening right now. You can buy or sell your like, new, or gently used downhill skis, snowboards, clothing items, and more. All proceeds are going towards the Team Duluth Ski and Snowboard Club. The swap runs until 9 o'clock tonight at Spirit Mountain. You can also stop by from 10 to 4 on Saturday and 11 to 3 on Sunday. The Duluth School District will move ahead with high school sports, arts, and activities after all.
That news even after Duluth's COVID-19 case rate was above 30 per one or 10,000 10, residents for three straight weeks. District leaders previously said that that trend could have triggered a shutdown, but based on Superintendent John Magus' conversation with state officials, they're keeping athletics and activities open for now. Magus said that they're being safe and careful and will watch those numbers closely. CBS 3's Alex Libby spoke with Duluth High School athletes to hear their thoughts on this decision. Duluth High Schoolers are sharing their thoughts knowing they'll be able to move forward with sports, activities, and arts, at least for now. I think that it is the right decision just because, like, we've talked to all the athletes at Denfeld, like the soccer kids, the football and volleyball, and nobody's even been tested in, like, since the, like, flare-up in August. Denfeld senior Allie Allers plays volleyball. She says she wasn't worried about getting COVID-19 because the team was responsible about keeping their distance and wearing masks. We've just been super careful with everything, like not letting barely any people in and wearing masks like all the time. So nobody like it hasn't really flared up because of athletics. Duluth East tennis standout Eile Heidela agrees. She says sports are just as beneficial for mental health as physical. Because sports aren't like all about, a lot about like team bonding, like making your friendships that like you can hang out like outside of that sport, so that would be super sad if those sports got canceled just for that too. Aller says she thinks sports should continue as long as they're safe and don't contribute to the spreading of the virus. I mean, if it really flares up like, like because of the sports, so like a lot of athletes are getting it, I totally understand like letting it die down and taking a break from it for a while, but otherwise not really if it's not through athletes really flaring up. Now, Magus has asked for students, coaches, and advisors to keep following COVID safety uh, protocols. He also asked for community support to help keep COVID numbers down so students can keep learning and participating in those activities. He says that they are reevaluating constantly. Meanwhile, Minnesota tallied some more unfortunate COVID-19 milestones today. There were more than 1,700 new coronavirus cases and more and 13 more deaths. Now, today's numbers mark two straight weeks of more than 1,000 new daily cases. It's also the third straight day of double-digit deaths statewide. Now, as that rate of new daily cases in North Dakota and South Dakota remain among the highest in the nation, Minnesota counties and the state's western border are seeing some of the highest case growth state wide. The Iron Range is also one of Minnesota's new COVID-19 hotspots. The St. Louis County health officials announced today that they're seeing a dramatic growth in both confirmed cases and deaths in the Iron Range communities. They say that in central and northern St. Louis County, 41% of all cases during the pandemic have been confirmed in just the last month. There have also been 30 coronavirus-related deaths in those areas since September 1st. Health officials point to community spread and ill-advised social gatherings. Countywide, COVID-related hospitalizations are also at an all-time high. Now, as cases across Wisconsin are continuing to climb, the state is holding a free COVID testing site in Superior today. You can still stop by the Amsoil Distribution Center until 6 o'clock tonight. You don't need to have symptoms in order to be tested. Now, Douglas County is currently reporting 715 positive cases and one death. Cold temperatures and snow are always a challenge for those without a place to call home. But this year, the pandemic is expected to bring a whole other set of hurdles. That's why several organizations came together to host the annual Community Connect event today. They handed out hygiene items, winter clothes, and more to people who are struggling with homelessness or struggling financially. Organizers hope that this event will be a lifeline during a very challenging time. Especially as so many people are just struggling in different ways economically right now. It's awesome to be able to help in just a small way of giving them a winter coat. Now, if you or someone you know missed today's events, it'll be back next Friday as well. You can stop by the Damiano Center in downtown Duluth from 11 to 1 on October 30th. As millions of Americans begin voting by mail, new United States Postal Service records show delivery delays continue across the country. Parts of the presidential battleground states of Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Ohio are missing delivery goals by wide margins. Now, that's according to the Associated Press that the agency is reportedly struggling to regain its footing after a tumultuous summer. This raises the possibility of ballots being rejected because of late arrivals. 
The Duluth firefighter who police say attacked a woman on a hiking trail over the summer now faces two felony charges. 49-year-old Conrad Sundy uh, is charged with aggravated robbery and third-degree assault. Now, according to the criminal complaint, the 65-year-old victim uh, was startled by a Sunday off and three off-leash dogs while running on a West Duluth trail back in July. The victim told police she asked Sunday to leash his dogs. He called her name, so she took out her phone to get a picture. The complaint says that that's when Sunday lifted his bike and struck the victim in the chest with the front tire. She fell to the ground. Sunday got on top of her and punched her face into the ground, fracturing her nose. They struggled for her phone. The complaint says that Sunday took it. An officer later found it tossed down in an embankment. Now, according to this complaint, Sunday admitted his role in the attack to police. He originally only faced a citation and a suspension from work. Still to come on live local CBS 3, our record-breaking snow caught some Minnesotans off guard. Find out how the snow affected local landscapers next. And we've got some Arctic air making its way into the Northland for your weekend, so it'll be dry, but those cold temps do hang around. Have the forecast coming up next. Live, local, CBS 3 News at 6 with Kristen Bucky, Anthony Matt, Kelly Hinson, and weather with meteorologist Dave Anderson on Live, local, CBS 3. Season 2 is the here. The Kelly Clarkson now. Show, weekdays at 3 on CBS 3. I guarantee you if your home just burned to the ground or you had a major accident, your first thing you're going to think about, it's not going to be, I just saved $500 on my auto and home insurance today. It's going to be, am I covered? At Vernon Insurance Agency, our first, second, and third goal is that you understand your coverage, there's no gaps in coverage, and your claims are covered when you have them. Call Vernon Insurance Agency today, 218-384-3970. For months, we've all done our best to stay safe, but to remain safe in the long run, it's up to us all to take actions that don't just slow the spread of COVID, but collectively overcome it. Like getting a test if you have any symptoms, answering if your health department calls, and wearing a mask in public spaces. We all want to regain what we love in life. To get there, we all need to go forward and do our part. Sponsored by Minnesota Department of Health. Aired in cooperation with the Minnesota Broadcasters Association and this station. Bender Shoes Storewide Sale is going on now. It isn't always easy living in the Northland. Up here, we have to count on our neighbors and let them know they can always count on us. I have the honor of serving our community in the State Assembly. Down there, I'm fighting to make health care more affordable and broadband more accessible. My opponent has other ideas. He wants to help companies like Foxconn give tax cuts and bailouts to billionaires, leaving us behind. I'm Beth Myers, and you can always count on me. It's coming. You ready? Because Toro Snow Days sale is here. With the number one brand in snowblowers, you will dominate winter. And now during Toro Snow Days, get up to $100 off select two-stage snowblowers, up to $40 off select 60-volt battery snowblowers, and up to $50 off select single-stage snowblowers, plus great financing offers. Win winter with Toro. Classic Rock KQ is once again the Northland's number one radio station. The KQ Morning Show, the most listened to radio program in the Northland. The KQ Trainwreck, the Northland's number one afternoon show. Thank you for making us the Northland's number one radio station. 95 KQDS. Is it safe to go back to concerts? This sounds like a rave. The experiment trying to find out. New doctors. It is the question that matters the most. Donde esta? That takes you behind the story. Robert. It drives everything we do. It is the foundation of trust. Who did all of this? And the truth that propels us forward. What did you make of that? It is the question. One word, three letters long. And without it, our purpose. That's news. And our freedom fade. This is why. The yeah, Kelly Clarkson yeah. Show, weekdays at 3 on CBS 3. The Kelly Clarkson Show, right here. Weekdays at 3 on CBS 3. And now, your WeatherMax forecast with meteorologist Caitlin Moffitt. 
So today was another chilly day across the Northland. Here in the Twin Ports, we only hit a high of 34 degrees, now average being 48 degrees. So we're slowly getting a little bit closer to those averages. We've seen such cold temperatures for several weeks, I feel like, now that winter kind of made its early appearance here in the Northland. Take a look at this record low temp, though. Typically, some records will be broken in single digits. We're not quite there just yet, but uh, as we work our way through the weekend into next week, we could be some set setting some records as we head into Monday and even Tuesday. Doppler and satellite, we've got some light flurries across the region. You can see over in Ironwood, we had a few light snow showers earlier this afternoon here on the Doppler and satellite, but those have come to an end. And we're just looking at some lingering flurries through the evening tonight as we've got such cold temperatures working their way back in to the region. I know I say cold temperatures again, but really we've got another Arctic high uh, pressure system moving into the region. So that's going to kind of cool things down tonight into your tomorrow morning. Currently in the top of the hill in Canal Park, we're at 36 degrees, mostly cloudy skies, winds out of the northwest at about 10 miles per hour. Pretty calm out there, pretty quiet as well, and uh, temperatures aren't going con to continue to drop. Now I want to show you this national temperature map because uh, if you can't tell where the cold front sits well it's pretty obvious on this map we've got a strong temperature gradient from Pittsburgh being 74 degrees and Chicago a chilly 44 degrees we've got this Arctic air, air mass this high pressure is going to continue to just seep down into the country and that's bringing of course us so far up to the north such cold temperatures as where we should be sitting seeing temperatures near that 50 degree mark Future cast for the remainder of your night tonight. We've got a few flurries out there this evening. Otherwise, quiet conditions and mostly to partly cloudy skies. So a few areas will dip down into the teens into your Saturday morning. And then by the Saturday afternoon area, we should see some sunshine out there for about half the afternoon, but then clouds do quickly increase Saturday night into your Sunday as we've got another system of snow that is going to be coming towards us. But we're not going to be seeing that snow on Sunday afternoon besides a few flurries and even some light snow. This is kind of as far north as it's going to make it Sunday morning. So areas in Hinkley or Siren or Brainerd could see some light snow showers. The Twin Ports really only expecting a dusting, even some flurries because you'll see how scattered it becomes by three o'clock or so. The Twin Cities could see some light snow early Sunday morning, but it's a very light system that areas in south, the South Shore will see some light flurries by Sunday evening and then we'll be all done and set. So tonight 20 degrees up on the hill, a few areas to dipping into the teens like Hibbing. They kind of sit where their sensor sits in a little bit of a valley up there. Uh, over in northern Wisconsin, 18 in Ashland, 18 in Mercer, and then tomorrow we jump back into the mid to upper 30s. A little bit more cloud cover in northern Wisconsin as that snowy system slides to our south. Areas in northern Minnesota, though, 31 degrees for the high, 32 in International Falls, and we'll see a calm wind out of the west at about 4 to 6 miles per hour. Seven-day forecast, do expect a few flurries on Sunday, even some light snow to our south. Otherwise, a pretty quiet weekend on tap. Temperature-wise, it's going to be a little chilly for sure, as we're going to not even barely pass that freezing mark for our afternoons. And then, of course, overnight lows, we're going to be dipping into the teens. Uh, so a pretty cold couple of days ahead. Monday, Tuesday, we could even break some record lows as we do dip into the single digits, possibly to the north. Um, so we know winter is here early. Why not keep on breaking records? Exactly. It's a record-breaking month. But you know what? With those cold temperatures, I don't mind them as much as long as I see that sunshine. Yes, and we do have some upper 30s and 40s returning next week. So we'll see it's, where we go. It's a seasonable <laughs> temperature. It's a little early for the chilliness and the snow, but... These aren't any. These aren't temperatures we've never seen before. Exactly. As Minnesotans and Northlanders, we're, we're we're <laughs> used to this type of temperatures. We're used to this kind of cold weather. So definitely nothing that we can't handle. Nope. All right. Thanks, Caitlin. You bet. Our early season of snow is catching some Minnesotans off guard. Now that includes some snow contractors. Now down in Minneapolis, some of these contractors perform landscaping in the summer and snow plowing in the winter. Our storms this past week were so unexpected that most businesses were scrambling to turn their operations around. A Twin Cities company that dispatches snow contractors says that it has responded to more than 1,500 calls in a 24-hour period. Last 24 hours, I had to completely disassemble my fall cleanup box and make sure the plow is still already and working. Usually, we get all the leaves down before we see some snow, but not this year. No one was really prepared for this whatsoever. Contractors say that if you still had leaves to rake, don't worry. As long as it stays cold, you can keep them there until the spring.
A new report from the Wisconsin environmental officials finds that the state's air quality is improving. Now, according to the Wisconsin DNR, most of these areas are meeting the national standards. The report released earlier this morning analyzes 15 years of air pollution data through 2019. Officials say that right now, 95% of the state's population lives in areas meeting all air quality standards established by the federal government. Coming up ahead in sports, the opening night of the Big Ten as the Badgers take the field. A preview of their game versus Illinois coming up right after the break. CBS3 live cams are brought to you by Kohler Chevrolet Buick GMC Cadillac. You're not just getting a car, you're getting Kohler. At Super One Foods, we're always looking for new talent to join our five-star service team. We are a growing family-owned company that provides opportunities to learn new skills and enhance your working knowledge while serving your friends and neighbors. From flexible scheduling and variety in jobs to competitive wages and exceptional benefits, Super One Foods offers an excellent environment to grow both personally and professionally and can provide you with the foundation for career advancement in the communities we serve. Come join our team, Super One Foods. Jobs right in your neighborhood. Okay, Mr. Medicare figure outer. One last question. What's the cost? For many, Part A is free. Cost goes up the more parts you add. But UCARE has Medicare Advantage plans that come with everything you need. Sounds good. And so does your bike. Now. Yeah, thanks to you, she's purring like a kitten on a bed of yarn. Well, that's a new one. Yeah, I just made it up. You can steal it for your bike shop. No, I'm good. My 95.7 is the Northland's best variety all day. From Ed Sheeran and Maroon 5 to Lady Gaga and Brian Adams. Always family and office friendly. My 95.7, your life, your music. I'm Quinn Nystrom, and I pay $600 a month for two vials of insulin. And that's with insurance. Meanwhile, drug company profits go up and up. It's why I refuse to take their money for my campaign. But Pete Stauber has taken tens of thousands of dollars from corporate interests and voted five times against lowering the cost of prescription drugs. I approve this message because I know we literally can't afford Pete Stauber in Congress. If I have the honor of being president, I promise you I will lead. My plan lowers health care costs, gets us to universal coverage quickly when Americans desperately need it. By making it less expensive for Americans to choose plans with lower deductibles and out-of-pocket expenses. By lowering prescription drug prices. By ending the practice of so-called surprise billings. When I'm president, I will take care of your health care coverage and your family the same way I would my own. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. I am Robert. My wife, Katie. I'm Ollie. Yes, I'm Ollie. Ollie. We are the fourth generation of a family farm. It has been more down times than good times. Two years ago, a storm came through this area, took down our barn. Financially, it was unbearable. But Tina Smith and her staff, they came through big for us. And she continues to be there for us. That's something I've never seen in a politician before. Really impressed me. I feel very fortunate to have her as our senator. I'm Tina Smith, and I approve this message. Classic Rock KQ is once again the Northland's number one radio station. The KQ Morning Show, the most listened to radio program in the Northland. The KQ Train Red, the Northland's number one afternoon show. Thank you for making us the Northland's number one radio station. 95 KQDS. Season two is here. The Kelly Clarkson Show, weekdays at 3 on CBS3. Week three of the high school football season in Minnesota kicks off today with a jam-packed schedule of games that started earlier this afternoon. McGregor taking on Carlton Renshaw in nine-man action over in Esco. Late in the first quarter, Zeke Ruzo takes the handoff and barrels his way in from three yards out for the opening touchdown of the contest. Extra point is good. It's seven to nothing, Raptors. Final minute of the first quarter, Kyle Cedar takes the handoff. 
fakes out the cameraman, breaks a couple of tacklers, and drags two opponents with him into the end zone. Extra point missed. Now it's 13 to nothing Raptors to the second half. It's Cedar again, this time going to the outside and goes untouched for his second touchdown of the day to extend the lead. It was all Raptors in this one, 26 to 6, the final. Now coming up tonight at 10, it's another edition of Red Zone Live. Highlights from all across the Northland, including Duluthies at Hermantown, Cloquet at Proctor, and in Wisconsin, it's Northwestern hosting Spooner. A grand total of seven games on the docket, so you won't want to miss this. That's tonight at 10, right here on CBS3 Duluth. The Big Ten football season is almost here tonight. The Wisconsin Badgers will open up their fall schedule, which almost didn't happen against the Fighting Illini of Illinois. We could learn a lot about this Badger team tonight, currently ranked 14th in the AP poll. But starting redshirt freshman Graham Mertz at quarterback in place of the injured senior Jack Cohen, who was sidelined earlier this month by a non-contact foot injury in practice. The big thing is that you, you go out and you trust yourself and play confident and, you know, you, you do your, your part for the team. And his part is to run the offense and he doesn't have to do it alone, but he's got to certainly, he's a part of every play and he's got to do his part and, and I feel good about him doing that. Gophers fans, you'll have to wait another day as the team will open up their season tomorrow against another ranked opponent in Michigan. It's the 100th meeting between the two teams that fight for the Little Brown Jug. The Gophers will be looking for their first win at home against Michigan since 1977. Kickoff is scheduled for 6.30 p.m. Now that's all for sports. I'll send things back to you, Natalie. All right. Thanks, Neil. Coming up tonight on the CBS 3 News at 10, thousands of dollars in grant money is being used to help patients at a cancer center in Ashland get the care that they need. Tonight at 10, we learn about what this money means for them. Well, according to our producer, everyone should go skydiving at least once in their lifetime. Well, one World War II veteran just scratched that off her bucket list. At 102, Millie Bailey says that she's always wanted to go skydiving. She calls it the thrill of a lifetime. Um, and that's been a, a, a thrill of a lifetime and a lifetime that's been full of thrills. Now, in World War II, she joined the Women's Army Corps, raise, rising to the unit commander, and one, is one of only two African-American women in her class to adjunct at adjunct general school. She retired from the government services at 45 at government services rather 45 years ago and has been chasing her dreams ever since. Pretty cool. Caitlin, have you been skydiving? I have not, but I've always considered like that sounds so fun. Oh yeah. But I just don't know. I would 150% go. I've been trying to convince my stepmom to go with me. She kind of thinks it's a joke because I keep <laughs> telling her, hey, we're going skydiving. She keeps saying no, but one day I'm just gonna one book us tickets for her birthday. Because I mean a thrill of a lifetime, that's pretty that's, That's a, exactly what that is. Exactly. <laughs> thrill. Can we get a last look at the weather there, Caitlin? Uh, yeah. So last, uh, tonight, looking at the temperature-wise, we're going to be dropping down to near 20 degrees up on the hill. Partly cloudy skies. Winds, though, fairly calm overnight. And then as you head into your Saturday morning, we will wake up in the teens, but by the mid-afternoon, uh, we'll get to 25 degrees, 11 a.m., 31 degrees for your afternoon high. Partly cloudy skies, and then clouds will increase into your Sunday. All right. Sounds great. Thanks, Caitlin. Well, that's your CBS 3 News at 6. We'll see you right back here at 10.